This is Winzy and Coffee, encouraging you to choose abstinence. You can wait even on a date. You can wait so don't be irate. Yes, you can make that decision to cool your burning passion. So stand up for your purity and preserve your chastity. The sight of evil, you should flee and claim your victory. Use your good sense and choose abstinence. Make a wise decision in any situation and trust in the Lord. And choose abstinence. We greet you once again in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today you are going to be blessed by a very special program. I know it's going to minister to you and minister to you very directly. It doesn't matter who you are. There is something in this message for you today. It's entitled, The Seven Stages in Fulfilling the Dream. Your purpose, your dream, your vision, whatever you may label it, it concerns your life and your lifestyle and your key assignment in this life. Today we will deal in this program with a addressing levels, various aspects that you need to understand and you need to have clarified with respect to living your dreams and fulfilling your dreams. It will fascinate you, it will bless you, it will inform you, it will educate you, it will enlighten you, it will impact you and it will bring positive change in your life. So be sure that you listen to this program throughout the seven stages in fulfilling the dream. Let's go. Genesis 37 and verse 5, Genesis 50, verses 18, 19, and 20. Joseph was born, and the Lord gave him a dream indicating his purpose in life and for life. His direction, everything in your life would hinge on your dream, and aspects of the dream, um, places, positions, directions, says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord, talking about a context of the dream. The dream talks about our purpose, our assignment, our destiny, what God has you here for and what he is doing with you, for you, and through you. And that's the embodiment of the dream. Understanding the dream is very important and very, very importantly, the stages of the dream. So Joseph passed through this. He got the dream, first of all. First of all, you get the dream. God gives you a dream in your heart. He gives you a vision. Sometimes you may just call it a desire. It's a God-given desire. That's why he says, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. It may just feel like a desire. This is a desire that God has for me and it's, it's in line with God's will and purpose. Sometimes it's like a burning desire. Sometimes you call it a passion. And you say, I want to pursue my passion. I want to pursue my purpose with passion. Whatever it is, but God gives you that and he guides you. There is a general purpose for which he calls you to serve him and to serve his kingdom and to minister to people. And then there are specific areas in your life that God will give you dreams for and direction for. He has a dream for your social life, your family life, marital situation, what you do with your family, your, your, your children, job-wise, career-wise, ministry-wise, money-wise, investment-wise, business-wise, health-wise. He has dreams for your life. And as you go pursuing that course and pursuing the purpose in the context of the dream, different stages you, you will pass through, different phases, different dimensions you will pass through and you need to understand. Joseph got the dream first of all, so you get the dream. After he got the dream, the Bible says, he dreamed a dream and in the same verse something happened. His brothers hated him the more. 
So you see, the dream is the positive thing. The dream is the wonderful thing. But then you have a negative that comes along and you wonder what is the purpose of the negative. There is something called testing. There is something called proving. And that's why the negative factor is necessary. Adam and Eve, their loyalty and their faithfulness had to be tested. And that's why that stuff came in. And then you see Joseph got a dream, but then the testing element comes in. So after the dream comes the test and the, te the dream would be tested. The dream would be opposed. The dream will be attacked if you will. But the authenticity of the dream stands and as long as you are faithful and you are loyal and you are committed to that dream and you are saying I will stick with God. I will work with God. I will do what God wants me to do. I will be what God wants me to be. I will not yield. I will not surrender. I will not succumb to the pressures of men, to the pressures of my family who don't understand. I will not su surrender and succumb to the pressures of my peers, to societal norms and trends. I ain't going to do that. I'm sticking with my dream. My dream is to walk uprightly. My dream is to be sober. My dream is to fulfill God's plan in righteousness and holiness. My dream is to be a man of God and a woman of God, a vessel of gold. And it doesn't matter who say what. I am going to stand. When that happens, brother, you are ready for God's blessing. So pass your test. Be your best. Pass your test. Be your best. Pass your test. Conquer and prove that you're a vessel of gold. The test comes. And when the test comes, as you stand in that test, the Bible says, after they hated him, you read a few verses lower down. He dreamed another dream. When you stand, when you stand for what God wants you to stand for, God expands your dream. The dream grows. So from the birch of the dream, there is the growth of the dream. So he takes you to another level. And he gives you, that's the other level. After you pass the first test, when you pass that test in primary school, it's another school. He dreamed another dream. It's another school. It's high school. And when you pass that test in high school and you come through your A-levels, it's another school. They call it university. And as you pass your bachelor's, there is another level called master's. And as you pass that, you're going to be it. Listen, there is another, he dreamed another dream because he passed the test. So from the birth of the dream to the growth of the dream, the third stage, another level. And this time when he dreamed the other dream, he dreamt greater things. The first time he dreamt the brothers bowing down to him and giving obeisance. Now he dreamt mummy in there. He dreamt daddy in there. He dreamt the moon and the stars. He moved from the earth where he saw sheaves falling down in the first dream. He moved now to the heavens. This was a higher dream. He said, hey boy, all the vex when I dream about the sheaves and I bet about those little plants bowing down to me. He said, yeah, the second dream. I dreamt the moon bowing too and I dreamt the sun bowing too. You move from earth to heaven as long as you stand for God he would always lift you to another level he that is faithful in that which is the least is faithful also in much he that is blessed with the least shall be blessed with much when you are faithful get ready for bigger things because he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him so all the tests that you may going, be going through, all the trials that you're going through, you're standing and holding your faith for healing. I know God is going to heal me. I know God is going to deliver me. Like the sister on Sunday, she said, I ain't got dead. I'm going to church and watching the doctor in his eyes and saying, no doctor, you're wrong because I'm going to church. And she had all kinds of different pressures and comments. But she said, I'm going to stay. You say, I'm going to die with cancer. But the same doctors had to come back and say, woman, we don't know what happened but you heal. Why? When you stand for God, he will stand for you. Let the Nebuchadnezzar heat the things seven times hotter, but you know who is on your side. You know there is a fourth man for your furnace. You know there are some angels for your lion's den. You know there is an earthquake to shake your prison doors open, and you know there is a parting of the Red Sea for you to march across to your promised land. It doesn't matter. God is on your side. He's a man of war. He is fighting for you. He will open the door. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. He will rock the foundation. He 
He would open the prison door. He would shake the shackles off your hand. He would shut the mouth of the enemy. He would make your enemy your, your footstool. And when a man's way is pleased the Lord, he calls it even his enemies. Peace with him. So get ready for your blessing with abundance. You stand up for him and he stands up for you. Get ready to move to another level. As long as you pass the test, it's another level. And that's the third stage. And after the third stage, then there seem to come a transition point. And you're going through, you're past that third stage. There comes, the enemy turns on the heat sometimes. And there comes the death of the dream. Seemingly, Joseph took him, put him in a pit, take him out put blood on his coat, took it back to the father and say, he is dead. But remember, Joseph represents a type of Christ. So when you say dead, you have to think about what you're saying. Because when they say he was dead, he just moved from earth and he went down to a place and he said, open up ye gates, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory, shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The voice replied. He said, it's all right. I'm happy to answer you. The king of glory, the Lord, strong and mighty. You like that? Okay. It's not only that. We don't stop at being strong and mighty. We do something with our strength and our might. The Lord, mighty in battle. Come down here for fight. You believe you will kill me on the cross. You believe you, but it's only from one stage to the other. So when everybody thought he was dead and they were crying and they were all that, it was just the death of the dream, if you know what I mean. But there was something happening underground. There was something happening behind the scenes that they didn't know about. He went in there and wringed the devil's neck and his hand and came back out with the keys, brother. He came back up better than he was before. And Joseph, that was the death of the dream. He went through the dying process. But you see, the natural life, after you pass your test here, God wants to take you to another dimension, the supernatural dimension. After you pass it in a certain realm, he moves you to a higher realm even again. Jesus, he went, and when he come back up, it was a resurrected body this time. Now, Jesus had the death of the dream, and he came back with greater power. There is that, except that grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies. It abides alone, but after it dies, it brings forth much fruit. So it's even greater abundance coming. Jesus said, I am one, but now that I'm dead, I have come back alive. I'm resurrected. He said, as many as receive me, to them I will give power to become the sons of God. So the devil couldn't handle one Jesus. But now we have Jesus in millions and millions and millions all over the world. Don't try. Tell them don't try to kill you. They're only making a mistake. There comes a time when the dreams seem to die. When your vision seem to die. When you don't know what will happen. Sometimes it's as though your zeal gone. It seems as though the pressures have overtaken you. Sometimes they feel that you are done. You ain't this church thing anymore. You and aspiring to your goals and all the zest and zeal that you have. I remember one time when I had went through as it were the death of the dream before I became a pastor. Some of my friends was asking, is coffee still saved? There was a time when I was retreating to advance. And there is that time when you retreat. When they thought Jehoshaphat and them folks were dead and they recoil and they were hiding. Something was happening in a three-day fast. And then came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation and say boy them fellas feel you're dead but go out there and rejoice just go and sing some song now and you're not to fight anymore because the anointing that came while you were down there while you were retreating they that wait upon when they think you're dead and done you're not getting ready to rise and run they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall
of the death of the grief after death resurrection you see when through the death of the dream and the resurrection power came out it was a different level for Joseph this was different now he had gone through his death process the death of the dream and now it was resurrection time another level what's the other level Pharaoh got in trouble he got a dream and he couldn't interpret the dream and then they say there is a guy in, inside there named Joseph and he will tell you about a dream so he went to Pharaoh and he interpreted the dream after the death of the dream now he interpreted the dream and Pharaoh said my God where you come from fella he said come on man you join me in the palace he moved out all them guys I say you demoted you fired you get out here you you move you're fired <laughs> and he get got them out and put them put he said Joseph you sit here at my right hand. You're my right hand man. Look what God did. Those people were having problems with dreams. God gave him another dream. They were having problems with the other dream. He went through the death process. And now God moved him from having dreams to interpreting dreams. Another level. He was not only having dreams now, but God took him to interpreting dreams. And after the death of the dream, that's where the interpretation come. And you begin to interpret the dream. That's when you begin to really understand now what is happening with your life. And then that's the stage where you reach now. And you say, oh, oh I'm now putting the pieces together. That's why I really didn't get that job. That's why I didn't marry that fella. That's why. Look how this piece fall in here. Look how this. Uh, that's why I didn't get the job that I got oh and, and that's why I was moved from there to there and I didn't get the visa for the United States because of this and the, oh I see everything is falling in place now that's why pastor put so much pressure on me and tell me to get myself in school and ministry and put pressure on me and say you must fast and pray and you must pay your tithes and you must be upright before you are qualified for oh I see because God had this kind of purpose for my life and now Joseph was beginning to put the pieces together that's the interpretation stage when you are beginning to understand that things are beginning to crystallize and now you are grounded even more than ever because you are beginning to see something happening it's resurrection time and you are moved out of the grave you are moved out of the pit you move out of that place of the debt and you are put into the throne and now you are in a place where you are recognizing this is really purpose somebody really means something so they interpret you might be confused when you are at the death level you might be confused when you are at that level of difficulty and the darkness and all of that but after a while if you understand that the interpretation is coming you would understand what is that he moves you to the interpretation level where you understand this thing and it looks different now you say oh I didn't understand that that looked bad for me that looked that's why he told the brothers he said what you meant for evil God meant for good brother this thing was all things you look at it now and you say uh -huh. oh yes I now realize God was working all things out together for good I got a test to get a testimony I went through the fire so that I can be purified. I went through the fire so I could be lifted higher. I went through the persecution to get the promotion. Something happened to make something happen. Moses' mother had a wonderful dream. And God had a tremendous purpose for Moses' life. And she got the dream, and she got pregnant, and she gave birth to the baby, wonderful baby boy, and all of that. And all of a sudden, Pharaoh said, we're killing all the babies in the land. Oh my, my, my. Deaths of the dream. But then the mother said, I am giving them my son to kill. They were, the devil is looking for Moses in particular. He I want to kill. But Moses' mother said, I'm going to just put him on the water. And when you ain't know what to do, brother, just put the stuff on the water. The water of the word. The water of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost shall guide you. Moses in the basket. Being... Come on, somebody. God knows exactly what is happening to your life. Then nothing confusing to him. He is never in darkness. Then no gray area with him. He knows the night from the day and the in between. And his hand is upon 
your destination. Moses said, put him on. And we're going to see how we're going to work this thing out. And then Pharaoh's daughter came by. The last one she wanted to come by was the first one to show up. And how many times the last thing you want to see and the last thing you want to hear, the last thing you want to experience is that is the thing that come. And you say, my God, this is the worst news that I ever hear. This is the last person I wanted to see. This is the last thing I wanted to happen to me and my family. Don't give up until you hear from on top. Fear will kill your babies, but you wouldn't kill this baby. This baby. Let them kill everything. Everybody, destroy all the jobs. Kill all that they want with AIDS. Kill all you want with your crime. Do all that you want with your drugs. But you parents, look at it in a literal way and say, you ain't touching my baby. You ain't touching my little Susan. You ain't touching my little Harold. You ain't touching my house. No, no, no. No plague shall come. Nigh my dwelling. I'm bringing the Holy Ghost around here. And he might be gentle as a dove, but he could get real bad when he's ready. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against you. Don't run. Don't hide. Don't give up. Something good is working out. There is a wonderful dream in your life. Something precious that God has in you and for you. That's why you're going through different phases and different stages. So after you interpret the dream and you understand, then you begin to get on the sailing waters. Pharaoh's guy came, Pharaoh's daughter, and she took Moses and paid all his school bill, mined him, gave him the best education, and trained him in the king's house to come back to defeat the system. That's the exact thing, God. So then they put the pieces together. And like Joseph, after the interpretation of the dream, then stage six, you start to live the dream. And now you are living the dream. You came through the fires. You came through the test. And now you're living the dream. In your life, the qualities of the dream the features of the dream, the manifestation of the beauty of the dream will be manifested in your life. Now you'll be living the dream in that place that God had prepared for you and you're enjoying your fulfillment. You're now moving through the fulfillment stage. You are now, you haven't reached there yet, but you're at the living stage where you start to live it out. And you are in that position now. Joseph is the man in charge. It doesn't matter what they do and what they do with you. And it's good for you to understand this part too. You see, when he gives you a dream, in order to have the fulfillment of your dream, you have to help somebody with their dream. Pharaoh had a dream. And he couldn't interpret the dream. And Joseph went to help Pharaoh with his dream. And God used that relationship. And that event to fulfill Joseph's dream. If you are faithful in another man's ministry, God will give you your own. Elijah, I want to give you a double portion. But you have to serve an Elijah. Joshua, I want you to take the promised land. But you have to serve a Moses. So when you help somebody with their dream, God will use that same experience, the same event, to fulfill your dream. After they passed the interpretation stage, he was living the dream. And now you come and it's manifested in your life. The success that God told you about, the blessings, the favor, God told you about the palace, but you end up in a pit and you want to know what's really going on here. God tell you about a palace and you end up in a prison and you wonder, what's this happening to me? Uh -uh. You don't understand. But then it comes through the different stages. You could interpret and then you start to live the dream because you understand it now. And God's favor is coming down in its fullest measure. 
So you are living the dream. While he was living the dream, then the final purpose for which God sent him across there came to pass. And his brothers came over. The same ones who opposed the dream. You see, and the stage, uh, there's a stage in living the dream where God will cause you to relive the dream. And you relive the dream. And you remember all the testimony. Look what the Lord has done. You look where he brought you through. And, what, and he was reliving the dream with those fellas. That's not the final stage. That's just part of the process. But the brothers came. All those who said, we hate you, this, that. They came. That's the last part we read there. When the brethren, after Jacob died, the brothers said, now Joseph will seek revenge on us. And he said, hey. No, 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 no. I ain't come to seek no revenge. He said, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. I am in the place of God. He said, God set this thing up and put me in this place so that I can save much people alive. That's when he reached the final stage, the fulfillment of the dream. The fulfillment of the dream. As it were, the last enemy was defeated. <laughs> the last of them all. He had proved a point to everybody else. And now, this is the fulfillment of the dream. You doubted me. You said I was fooled. You said, when a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies would be at peace with him. Jesus is coming back one day too to prove his point to the atheists to the agnostic and to that big antichrist that will be telling the world that Jesus Christ is a fooler and then that final stage would come the battle of Armageddon he will come back burst the cloud with all his glory and he will flatten the enemy and we shall be caught up to be with him to reign forever let me tell you it doesn't matter how you look at it from the smallest stage to the largest stage God has a plan he has a design he has a pattern he has a purpose and I want to dare you to pursue your purpose with passion because God is on your side to give you the power. I know that you would have been blessed today. I'm sure if you listen to this program throughout, you would have been blessed and enlightened. I want you to translate this into lifestyle now. Your dream, your vision, your purpose. You want this thing to be fulfilled. You just connect to this Jesus that we spoke about and let him enhance your chances. In fact, let him actually fulfill this dream through your life as you continue through the stages and the phases and you allow this dream to be fulfilled in your life. We want to pray with you right now, everyone out there concerning your dream, whatever respect, whatever aspect, whatever area of your life, you need this blessing, this fulfillment. God is going to do it now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the release of your anointing, the dream fulfilling, dream realizing anointing in the lives of people right now, Father. Whether it has to do with their personal lives, Father, spiritually, physically, domestic areas, financial, whatever, God, let the answer come forth in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. If you do not have Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, make sure that you surrender your heart and your life fully to him and let him be the dream fulfiller in your life. God bless you and we'll see you next time. This is Winsy and Coffee encouraging you to choose abstinence. You can wait even on a date. You can wait so long we are right. Yes, you can make that decision to cool your burning passion. So stand up for your purity of your chastity the sight of evil you should flee and claim your victory in any situation and trust in the Lord and choose after